Hello, this is one of a series of short reflections on the names and titles attributed to Jesus. And the name title we've chosen is Jesus the Redeemer. Uh, and our passage is Ephesians 1, 3 to 10. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfilment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. So in this passage, Paul describes our adoption through Jesus Christ. God loves us. Uh, indeed, he's always loved us. Uh, and because of his love, he transforms us into his sons and daughters. That process, the process of being adopted by God, Paul describes as redemption. But what does redemption mean? Uh, the word here uh, in the passage means deliverance by payment of a price. It was a concept that would have been familiar to uh, uh, the Jews of Jesus' time. Uh, if someone fell into debt, which they were unable to repay, they could be enslaved by their creditor. And it was the, the job of the family to try to buy them back out of slavery by payment of the debt. The one that paid the debt was called the Redeemer. Now, the theme of redemption, of course, runs throughout the Bible. God is seen as Israel's Redeemer, who delivers them from slavery in Egypt. And again, as they return from exile in Babylon, the prophets spoke frequently of God's redemption of his people. Uh, many images are used to describe the same idea the freeing of slaves, the release of prisoners, the healing of the sick, the movement from darkness into light. Here, Paul tells us that we have been redeemed by Jesus. We were slaves, uh, but now we are sons and daughters of God. A price had to be paid to achieve our release, but God paid it. We can begin a new life free from guilt, our sins forgiven. Redemption is a now thing. We are right now sons and daughters of God. It might not feel like it sometimes, but we are. Um, we might continue to live our lives as slaves, following the same patterns of behaviour, but we no longer need to do so. The price has been paid. A hand reached down, pulled us out of the dark cave, put us in clean clothes and put our feet on a rock. We were lost, but now we've been found. We were slaves. Now we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Uh, there's a scene in the film Shawshank Redemption, which many people will know uh, and which always moves me. Uh, the central character, Andy Defresny, is sentenced to 20 years in prison uh, for murdering his wife and her lover, uh, although he protests his innocence. Uh, the prison is a dark and terribly brutal place overseen by sadistic guards and a corrupt warden. Andy finds himself one day working alone in the warden's office, and he begins to play a record. Uh, it's an operatic song from the marriage of Figaro. And he plays it over the prison tannoy. The singing is in Italian, but it is truly beautiful, and no one can quite believe what's happening. The guards try to break down the door to stop him playing the record, but for a brief period they fail. And we see Andy observing them, um, knowing that he will face a terrible punishment for what he's done, uh, but apparently concluding that it was worth the cost. Every prisoner in the prison stops to listen, astonished. Uh, and for those few precious minutes, the brutal reality of the place is suspended and a sense of euphoria fills the prison. Andy is severely punished for his actions. 
As the music plays, we hear Andy's fellow prisoner, Ellis Red Redding, recalling that moment, saying, I have no idea to this day what those Italian ladies were singing about. Truth is, I don't want to know. I would like to think they were singing about something so beautiful it can't be expressed in words and makes your heart ache because of it. I tell you, those voices soared higher and farther than anyone in a grey place dares to dream. It is like some beautiful bird flapped into our drab little cage and made these walls dissolve away. For the briefest moment, every last man in Shawshank felt free. Now, Jesus, I suggest, is like that bird, that beautiful bird. He has descended into our lives. He's freed us. He's made those walls melt away. And by his song, he points us towards a time when all sickness, pain and anguish will finally dissolve. When, as Paul wrote in that passage to Ephesians, God will bring unity to all things in heaven and earth under Christ. <laughs>